Welcome to the Cultivating Health Equity Stories podcast. In this captivating series, we delve into the heart of health equity, sharing stories that illuminate the path toward a fairer, more inclusive healthcare landscape. Our mission is to amplify voices, challenge norms, and inspire change. Here is your host, Dr. Troy Campbell, a research scientist on health equity issues. Yeah. Thank you for for painting that picture of your uh-huh. background, quite a rich uh, story. And 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 if you don't mind, we transition. You know, um, later on in life, you you learned that you had cancer. And um, if you don't mind telling us, or share the moment you learn, or or the moments or the time leading up to your breast cancer diagnosis. Tell us about your thoughts and your feelings yeah. and and so forth. So it started from Lil and I, we got married in 99. And two years into our marriage, I felt a couple of lumps in my breast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, it was just, oh my word, lumps in my breast. Mm-hmm. I need to go check it out. And it happened that they were cysts, and uh, we the aspirated couple of um, two of them, and mm-hmm. they were benign. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord, they were benign. Yes. That was uh, that was uh, back in to probably two thousand and one, and I had to do mammograms every year because they told me I had dense breasts, mm-hmm. and so. I would do mammograms every, and that I was about 30 years old. Yeah. And uh, we, and doing mammograms every year, at the time of being 30, it was, it's not right. a, it's not something that you're looking forward to doing. Right. And every time it was benign, um, every time it was, beautiful nothing going on and when I was I think when I was about I want to say 35 we had I, I'm not sure if I'm getting the, the years right, right but I fine. moved to California and um, they told me that you don't have to do annual breast exam um, annual mammograms you'll continue your, your breast exams you know that you have lumpy breasts um, and so I stopped doing the the oh, mammograms annually. I see. And so I I took those lumps as being, yeah, you know, Muscle, something that's just there. Benign. Yes. Yeah, benign. Mm-hmm. And I've been mm-hmm. doing it. Um, the last time I did it, it was in, um, when I was forty. I did it again benign I while I was at Hopkins before I moved to to North Carolina I I did and it was fine and then so I'm just carrying yeah. on my merry way yeah. enjoying life working you know raising my daughter I had a daughter you okay. know nice. um Thank she you. is my joy and my she is wonderful um Abigail, and uh, and this is the reason why we're in Texas right now. But that's another story. But, um, <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. And I just continued, and I felt those lumps in my breast, and to me, it was not a big deal. Until there was one that was like really getting bigger, and I'm like, oh, this is. And my husband literally um, showed it to me, like, baby, what's this? Why is this? You know, right. and then I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna. Oh, and it was when, even with this growing, I'm like, it's just a cyst. It was when I felt a little lump under my breast because I still kept doing under my armpits. Um, yeah. I still kept on doing my my breast exams, but when I saw, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is it. This is not good. This is not good. And so we were on a staycation in Orlando and um I did the the mammogram and it came highly suspicious. So 
we did the biopsy and I remember I was rounding on a patient um, and I got the call and I excused myself from the patient's room and I went into the room 301 mm. and the, doc the doctor called me and he, he said, Charmaine, um, you have stage three breast cancer mm. while at work. Mm. I stopped. Yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. That was my first word I said to my, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. And I don't, I don't remember anything again. I, so I, I was, I was at work. I called my CNO. I told her that, and I had been keeping her informed. And I said, um, Jody, um, it's cancer. And I just walked out. I said, I cannot even breathe right now. I just need to go outside and and first person I call was my husband. I say, baby, I have cancer. I have stage three breast cancer. And he said, how many stages are there, baby? And I call my sister. And I said, baby, and I call, I have a friend, Michelle. I, I called her and all of, I'm just calling people. I have not say, Lord, what am it, I going to do yet? It's good to know that you're calling your network. It's good yes. to know that you have a husband yeah, and, my and husband. family members mm -hmm. and friends. Yes. Yes. I just called everyone. My CNO, my Jody said to me, um, can I take you home? And I said, you know what? I took a deep breath. And I said, Lord, and everybody reassured me. Michelle told me it was going to be okay. My husband told me it's going to be okay. My sister told me it's going to be okay. And then I said, Lord. And I remember going going to the resort because we were at a resort, a staycation, and my husband, who I have to really right. like beg him to sing, and he he sang uh, at karaoke because we went there, and my we had not told our daughter, my da our daughter, anything about the the diagnosis, and um. Your daughter was with you, or yeah, not? she mm -hmm. was at. She was on this vacation with me. We didn't tell her anything then. Yeah. Um, we wanted to so, the treatment plan and everything. Here you are of faith mm -hmm. and um, living a healthy life, and um, you find yourself with the dreaded, you know, diagnosis mm -hmm. of breast cancer, stage three. Mm -hmm. You know, did you say why me, Lord? Mm -hmm. Not, not just yet. I did not mm -hmm. say why me yet. It was not even, I, no, I didn't say why me yet. I, I don't even yeah. think I ever said why me. I remember talking to my mom probably about a year ago. And she said, you know what, Chami, you're my strong one. Yeah. You're my strong one. That's what oh, she man. said to me. You're my strong one. And, and. Um, and uh, I knew why she said that right. because I've always been the one that has been there with her. That's how I know how to, to sew because I've been the one, um, staying late in with the her. night during right. Christmas time, doing the sewing with her, my other sisters, one was little, one was, um, in the town closer to, to her school, you know, how they always send the one to town to stay with mm -hmm. the uncle that so they can go to school closer. Yeah, that was, that was, so I was always the one with mommy so I can do all of those things. So you're a resilient person. Yeah. I and this can, might be the biggest test of that who could you be, are. Yeah, that yeah. could be. And I, I tell you, um, I, I don't think I said, why me? And, and uh, when I, so having the diagnosis, getting saying it is cancer and and waiting to hear what type of cancer it is that's another another right. period of time right. and so i had i i know i knew many providers and there was one provider that i knew he had beautiful bedside manners and i and and we had a, a cordial nice relationship and i said doctor this doctor here he would be perfect I'm going to, I'm going to go to Dr. Velas. Yeah. And as soon as I got a diagnosis, he immediately saw me. It's like six o'clock in the morning. He, he mm. came in to see me and he told me the different types of cancers 
So here I am, he, he talked to me about the three different types and the last one, the triple negative breast cancer, mm -hmm. he said, that's the one you don't want to have. So here I am because he, we didn't have the diagnosis, which type here I am praying. So I did not have this one. Can you imagine right. that? Right. I right. want the estrogen one or the other one or the other one, but not the triple negative because that's another, that's, that's yeah. very aggressive. And guess what I had? Hmm. When I got the diagnosis, it was triple negative breast cancer. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And Dr. Wow. Velaz, I asked him, I said to him, Dr. Velaz, do you believe in God? I needed to have a physician that believed believe in God. In God. Wow. Remarkable. I needed to. Yeah. And he said, yes. He believed in God. And I'm like, yes. And he said, Charmaine, put on those gloves. And my husband was with me every step of the way. Put on those gloves. And he went like this. Get ready to fight. Yes. Yeah. He has like been that. doing this. He's very optimistic. He said two years, a year later, you wouldn't even, you, you would, you, this would be all be behind you. And I said, and we've been praying, and that's where I got. I I had my I had people praying for me. I call um, my friends, my yeah, everybody praying for me, and I'm praying for me too. Yeah. And that's when I was introduced to Doctor um, Pastor um, Pastor Simon and his prayer group. And mm. this is some mighty prayer people from all from Jamaica, England, Canada, the U.S. praying. <laughs> And and I just knew, I just knew, you were I get just it. knew that God would have healed me. I just knew when you know something and had no doubt. How important is it to have that support? And and I can't help but highlight the fact that your physician had a, an appreciation for My your faith. spirituality. God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is so important. And and um the 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 spousal support, my husband, yes. oh mm -hmm. my word. There with me from the diagnosis. And and going through chemo and and the treatment, this is another another yeah. story. Right. But my sisters, I have two sisters. I'm in the middle. My biggest sister lived in California. My youngest sister lived in Antigua. They would take turns to come over and every day. And it was during COVID. And, yeah. and they allowed me to have one person with me during chemo. Yeah. And I remember going to seeing... Um, and look at this. Look at how God has orchestrated this whole thing. The 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 the, the recovery process. The you know anytime you you deal you have a new diagnosis of some kind. I went to counseling, and my counselor had breast cancer. Wow. And so she was another source relate. of strength for me. She said, while the chemo is going through you, they say. I am healed. I am blessed. God is healing me. I am healed. I am blessed. God is healing me. And just the scriptures, I had all different scriptures. I had all the promises in the Bible. I would write all the promises in the Bible. There is a book of promises, and I would put my name, write my name down in all of the promises. Yeah. You know, I'm here listening to you. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you haven't mentioned your side effects and the effect of, you allude to it, you, you dwell on your spirituality, you dwell in prayer, you dwell on the promises embedded in the word of God, you dwell on your support system. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it seems that that was far more important than the physical challenges that you encountered. Yeah. Can you speak to that? Uh, your body versus 
your God, your spirituality. Mm. Yeah. Um, going through, so when I found a diagnosis, I, we had a treatment plan. I also found out another thing that was critical in my recovery was that I carried the BRCA gene. Mm. And so the BRCA gene is really the culprit. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what your lifestyle is or you're, you are vulnerable to having yeah. um, this, this um, cancer. And so Dr. Velez, and I got a second opinion, um, but he put together a treatment plan for me. And I remember um, the first dose of chemo, I had a reaction to it and I'm like, oh, I wanna stop because you know people will tell you, don't do chemo, just drink this soursop yeah. leaves and <laughs> don't do chemo, just pray. This person did it, you can do it too. Right. It is all about your relationship with God and what God has um, impressed on you to do. Mm. So nobody can tell you, nobody should tell you what to do. It is your relationship. If he tells you that he wants you to do this, wants you to do that, that's what you do. And it was so apparent to me what God was telling me to do. He wanted me to do the treatment, the chemo. He also wanted me to change my 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 eating habits eating from habits. being um, eating um, oxtail. <laughs> <laughs> and so take away all it's the something meat. your mother fed oh, you on, goodness. right? So. Yes. <laughs> and, and and I could not eat a meal without my I could not eat a meal without chicken or beef or I you can know. Relate. I yeah. Can relate. yeah. Um so I took away all of um, all the meats from my diet, and we juiced, and we we had everything um, natural, no process, lots okay. of water, and and even a a day like today, I don't know which type of water is the best water because I've heard alkaline water is better, distilled water. Mm-hmm. I had such conflicting messages, and I'm like, you know what? What tastes better? What tastes best with the water? Is the water. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So because you know, with chemo, you throw up. Oh my word! Um, it was just such a difficult time. But again, just having the support. And the prayer, I look forward to my prayer family. Um, we would come online, we would fast, do prayer and fasting for 24 hours every week. So I look forward to that. I didn't work. I went on medical leave. So I was able to spend time in the word. In the word. I did the word every morning was the word. I would stay in bed and the word. Um, and uh, that was my sort of strength. And I remember, and you talk about asking God, why me? And I found myself driving um, because in between chemo, you you able to you able to um, to to do. You know, I didn't work, but I was able to do, run errands and so forth. Right. And I remember sobbing, thanking God for the journey. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? Thanking God for this journey? (gasps) Interesting. Thanks for listening to Cultivating Health Equity Stories. Remember, our mission is to amplify voices, challenge norms, and inspire change. Go to CultivateHealthEquity.com, sign up on our email list, subscribe for future episodes, and find the resources mentioned in the show notes. Until next time.